accelerated compute chips like NVIDIA's Blackwell or AMD's MI Accelerator. In addition to the equipment needed to make those memory chips, you had mentioned, Casey, Applied Materials actually the leader in advanced packaging sales. So what happens after the memory chip is made? Well, you need to figure out how to attach it to the accelerated compute system alongside those GPUs, alongside the accelerators. Applied Materials does that too. Hey everybody, welcome back to Chip Stock Investor. Today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite companies in the wafer fab equipment applied materials, the industry generalist. And they recently had their quarterly earnings and we wanted to talk a little bit more about that, why we still like applied materials despite the fact that their earnings seemed a little sleepy. Let's talk about that. First though, I wanted to ask, Casey, someone said they didn't like your hat. And I feel like you should put it on just because this is your YouTube channel and I like the hat. Well, it doesn't go with my outfit today. Maybe it never goes with my outfit, but today I just felt like not wearing my hat. Okay. But ultimately, you. yes, I will continue to wear my hat when I feel like it. As you should. Okay. So I actually wanted to kick this your direction because you are the healthcare professional. And so this is your domain. We've been sitting on this little blog post from Google for a couple of weeks about the human brain. What does this have to do with semiconductors? This is an interesting piece and we'll make sure that we link it in the description so that you can read it too. It's a quick read. It's very simple to understand. Ultimately, what it's saying is we have a long ways to go to replicate what the human brain can do with very little. Semiconductors have to use a ton of power still in comparison to what we can compute with our brain. Just sitting here talking is basically no effort other than the fact that I have severe social anxiety, but really it's not burning any energy. And to create AI, to create something like Gemini that you and I chat with on a regular basis now, it is a ton of energy in comparison. So the argument that are we going to reach a point where we have too much compute power, are, are, are we efficient enough is... It's, we're a long ways away from that. Yeah, most, most definitely. And so then the conversation then needs to kind of take this turn to, if this is going to be a very long-term secular growth trend of always needing to do more, or maybe even not do more, just do the same amount of computing work with less energy, with less power, the Fab Five are who you ultimately always come back to because they are one of the gatekeepers of the semiconductor industry. So Fab Five, if you're not aware, ASML, Applied Materials, LAM Research, Tokyo Electron, and KLA Core. In that order, from largest to smallest in terms of revenue. And collectively, these five businesses form an oligopoly. They control about 70% of all semiconductor manufacturing equipment sales. And that's not just on the wafers, the silicon wafers but also on chip packaging. So after the wafers get diced up into chips and packaged into a computing system or a power system or sensors or whatever the case it may be, these companies also participate in that market too. And Applied Materials does especially. As you said, Casey, this is the industry generalist. This is the chart that we created for our semiconductor manufacturing video and manual, which you can find here in the video as well as in the description below. We broke this area down into all the different steps that it takes to make the final device. And Applied Materials has a slice of this entire process in making the final device. Yeah, we'll circle back to this pun. We'll circle back to this a little bit later and talk about some of the specific equipment Applied Materials offers. Let's get to the crux of the matter for investors. Casey, you said this was a sleepy quarter for Applied Materials. It's Q2 2024, uh, but this is actually for the three months that ended in April. Yeah. The reason I said sleepy was the revenue was nearly $6.7 which is flat year over year. No increase there. The earnings per share, however, was up 11% and 5% year over year, respectively. Gap earnings per share was at $2.06, non gap earnings per share at $2.09. Now, we mentioned in our last 
couple of videos on NVIDIA that much of the semiconductor industry is either still in a slump or, or maybe just emerging from the bear market. NVIDIA's AI infrastructure, accelerated compute infrastructure has been the exception to that because much of it is a brand new market. What this means for applied materials is they made a pivot to higher growth industries in 2022 and 2023 for auto and industrial, but that cycle came to an end last year. Now they're beginning to make a pivot back towards logic and memory chips, as well as addressing some of the rising needs for manufacturing that accelerated compute and AI infrastructure. So you mentioned the sleepy quarter. Earnings were up, even while revenue was basically flat year over year. So where did the earnings growth come from? The equipment sales themselves were, were pretty lackluster, as could be expected. But Applied Global Services, or AGS, those are services that Applied Materials offers to their semiconductor fab customers. They could be maintenance of the equipment, moving the equipment around the fab, making sure that it works properly. There's also financing that takes place for a lot of this equipment. All of that is bundled together in this AGS segment. And you can see it actually had a pretty healthy growth rate year over year. And in addition to that, profit margins went up because it's service revenue. It can be pretty scalable and, and a higher margin part of the business, especially in times when equipment sales are down. So that offset semi-equipment sales, also display sales. Applied Materials provides some equipment for making LED and OLED screen manufacturing. So the services business is what led to the rise in earnings per share. Of course, along with that, share buybacks also definitely contributed to the earnings per share rise. Yeah, absolutely. Applied Materials has bought back $1.52 billion in stock through the first half of this fiscal year, which is nearly a 50% increase since last year. And their balance sheet isn't looking too bad either. Yeah, as Applied Materials emerged from the bear market last year, a lot of their free cash flow flowed back under the balance sheet, we had this big giant surge for cash and short-term investments, uh, a bit higher in long-term investments as well. They own a, a fairly large stake in a Japanese company called Kukusai Electric that they actually had attempted to acquire, but they just, they have an equity stake in that. That's a different topic, but that's why some of the long-term investments have gone up. That company had an IPO and debt far lower than that cash and investments balance staying pretty stable at about 5.4 to 5.5 billion. This is a very, very healthy industrial and manufacturing based business. The outlook for applied materials is also looking a little sleepy. They expect the revenue to be flat sequentially in, ne in the next quarter. Just as a reminder, this quarter will be the three month period that ends in July. Why are we excited about the second half of the year for Applied Materials? So as we've been sharing, the second half of calendar year 2024 is expected to kick off the next all-out growth cycle for the semiconductor industry, especially semiconductor manufacturing equipment. There are dozens of brand new fabs around the world backed with investor dollars and of course, government funding. There's the US CHIPS Act, the European CHIPS Act, equivalent government subsidies in South Korea, in Japan, in Taiwan, so on and so forth, helping fuel this onshoring and friend shoring of semiconductor manufacturing. Paired with that, there is a lot of brand new technology beginning to come to market, supporting new logic chips, new memory chips, all of that accelerated compute technology. And Applied Materials portfolio addresses all of it. So if we're talking about higher performance DRAM memory chips or high bandwidth memory, which is essentially just DRAM chips stacked on top of each other to create this like ultra dense and ultra high performance memory that goes into accelerated compute chips like NVIDIA's Blackwell or AMD's MI300X accelerator. And in addition to the equipment needed to make those memory chips, you had mentioned, Casey, Applied Materials, actually the leader 
in advanced packaging sales. So what happens after the memory chip is made? Well, you need to figure out how to attach it to the accelerated compute system alongside those GPUs, alongside the accelerators. Applied Materials does that too. Before we show you some of the products that Applied Materials has, take a look at this semiconductor manufacturing process once again. Look at how many steps are involved in this process to get to the final device, to get to something like our cell phone. Applied Materials has their hand in so many of these steps. Now let's take a look at some of their products that they provide, some of their equipment. Yeah, here are some of the specific pieces of equipment. One thing that's interesting that you'll see missing from here is lithography. That goes to ASML. ASML is a specialist and for all intents and purposes, we can say it's something of a monopoly, especially with its high-end EUV extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment. So Casey, you had mentioned that applied materials plays in every step in that virtuous cycle, including lithography. How exactly? What you can see there in the middle blue bar under shape and remove pattern shaping. We did some more extensive videos on this last March when Applied Materials originally announced its Centura Sculpta machine, which is a way to craft finer features on the surface of a wafer and reduce the number of multi-patterning steps with ASML's lithography equipment. Operating those lithography machines can be quite expensive, quite tedious, and so pattern shaping is essentially an extension of the etch process where those features made during the lithography step can sort of be extended using plasma, uh, an ionized beam of, of plasma to further shrink those features down and increase the performance of the chip. A lot of companies, including Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, saying that they actually don't need ASML's latest and greatest high NA EUV machine. That's the one Intel loves to say it's the first to adopt but it's still testing and trying to figure out how to make that part of its manufacturing process. Centura Sculpta, it seems, can be plugged into TSMC's existing fab footprint, and it can just continue using the previous gen EUV equipment from ASML, thanks to Applied Materials Breakthrough. Good stuff here. Even lithography, Applied Materials most definitely playing a part of the process. Let's talk about valuation for applied materials. The current share price is around $214 at the time of this recording on May 24th. Let's, let's use a reverse DCF to see what the market is expecting based on this share price. Yes, you can see what we have plugged in here, earnings per share growth of 12% over the next three years, which is expected to be roughly the next growth cycle as all of these new fabs come online, and then a terminal growth rate of 5% thereafter, discount rate of 10%, gets us to roughly 214 to 220 per share for applied materials. That seems to be what the market is expecting, if you think this is a fair value right now. Is it a fair value? I, I think we tend to think so, th that it is still a fair value. This is not going to be the highest growth business. Simply, because it is the generalist. There is a lot going on in this business. And because they're not solely focused on one area of high growth, you're just never going to get like these really, really massive explosive growth rates like we may see from ASML, for example, in calendar year 2025. They're expecting a really, really big growth cycle for their EUV machines as more companies adopt those and put those to work. So Applied material is not going to be that fast of a growing business, but it is very stable. And even though it may not be the fastest growing business, we actually think earnings per share can increase faster than 12% over the next couple of years as this new growth cycle picks up steam starting the second half of this year. So Casey, this is a sizable position in our portfolio already. We've owned applied materials now for going on seven, maybe almost even eight years now. Don't quote me on that. I'm not looking at our, our portfolio as we talk about this, but it's been a while. It's been a phenomenal investment. Our initial purchase up four or 500%. What do we do with something like this? Well, it is a core position and we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it as one of our foundational 
businesses in our portfolio. We like the company. We have no intention of selling it. It is a full position in our portfolio, but this company, we still feel like we can nibble on it as the stock price allows us to. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And maybe in addition to that, we like a lot of other manufacturing equipment companies. In recent months, we've outlined how we feel about LAM Research, the number three company in the Fab Five. We've also talked about Excellus Technologies, ACLS. That's a new position that we've been adding to. And then Air Test Systems, AEHR, uh, another small cap that we think is promising in the next gen power market. Stay tuned, everybody. This is getting to be an exciting part of the semiconductor industry. Again, we put some of these stocks on hold after we purchased LAM Research a couple of times through early 2024 took a position at Salas, fired up our position again in air test systems. There's probably going to be a lot we need to talk about in semiconductor manufacturing equipment as the second half of 2024 gets rolling. It could be some exciting times. Absolutely. And if you are interested in coming along for the ride, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's free and easy way to support us here at Chipstock Investor, just hitting that subscribe button. You can find all of our show notes and published manuals over on our Discord channel that's included in the membership of $5 a month. That membership gets you a ton of value, lots of goodies. It's certainly less than a pair of on running shoes, which I love, as you all know. Yeah, like half, 60 bucks a year, half the cost of a pair of on running shoes. We're not going to get you in shape. Maybe in financial shape. Financial shape. There you go. That's right. All right. We'll see you all again soon at Chipsock Investor.